credit correct and go to her. <laughs> But she's a blessing to my life, and I love her. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, we come before you in Jesus' name. We just thank you for the last two days, Lord. We thank you for showing up and showing out. Showing yourself mighty and awesome, God. God, continue it tonight. Bless your people, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Remake us in your image, Father. Lord God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for your Holy Ghost. We thank you for your power and your authority, Lord God. Lord God, not my words, but your words, Father. Speak through me, Lord God, that your people might be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glad to see Sister Nikki in the house. (laughs) Praise God. Congratulations on your... um, Engagement. Amen. 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 She got engaged one a week ago. A few days ago. A few days ago. <laughs> well, almost a week. Almost a few days ago at her baby shower. Amen. To a great man of God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Talking to him, he loves you. Yes. He loves you and he's committed to you. Amen. You have a good man of God. Take care of him. Be a blessing to him. Because he will be a blessing to you. Amen. Whew. We've been talking about faith. Yes. Favor. Tonight is flavor. All right. He's <laughs> got on the cake. And just faith. Just to recap. Faith was just so good because we want now faith. Not faith that we had yesterday. Not faith for tomorrow. But we need now faith. Right now, faith. Yes. That type of faith that you can get out the boat and walk on water. Yes. That type of faith. That type of faith where you say to the mountain, get out of my way. We want now faith. We want faith that we can do everything that God says we can do. Yes. Everything in his word that he declares and decrees, we receive it and we believe it. We want that type of faith. That type of action. Faith is an action word. Mm-hmm. And we want to walk in faith. We want to walk in victory in yes. every situation. Yes. We are who God says we are. Yes. So let's get faithful. Yes. Amen. We, Peter was the only guy who got out, out of the boat. Eleven guys stayed in the boat. Mm-hmm. Let's not be staying in the boat, Christians. Yes. Yes. Let's be get out of the boat, Christians. Yes. Let's be walk on water, Christians. Yes. Let's say mountain, get out of my way. Yes. That's the type of Christians we need to be. Faithful. Ready to go. Then we have favor. God said, favor is yours. Amen. In Psalms 5 and 12, he says, the righteous, he shields with favor. That's so awesome. God puts a shield around you full of favor. That shield protects you. He said, a thousand might fall on your side, ten thousand on your right hand. You got favor, baby. That ain't coming near you. Hallelujah. Stop worrying about what happens to other people. Everybody losing their job, I might be next. You got favor! Come on, Jesus. You are a child of the king. I expect favor. You need to expect favor. You need to expect God's best. You need to expect blessings. You are not other people. T.D. Jake says, favor ain't fair. But it's fine by me. But it's fine by me. (laughs) See, favor ain't fair for the unbelievers. It ain't fair. They're the ones complaining. How come he got the job? How come she always get the promotion? Favor ain't fair for the unbelievers, but it's fine by me. Hallelujah. (laughs) It's all good. That's how we have to walk in our favor. Walk in our divine favor. Expect the favor of God in our lives. Stop talking about what you, oh man, I don't, I don't know how this is going to work out for me. No, Amen. you're blessed. Yes. You are an overcomer. Yes. <laughs> they are the tails. We are the heads. Jesus, that's right. They are losers. We're more than conquerors. Mm-hmm. Now they're going to see, how come you keep conquering? That's when you tell them about Jesus, baby. It's not me. That's the God in me. 
favor of God. The favor of God. Ooh, and tonight we're going to talk about flavor. <laughs> God gives you flavor. What is flavor? Flavor is that something that you add to make something have a different taste. It's the little spice you put in there. Flavor is also that style that you have. You got your own little flavor. <laughs> You know, you got your individuality. You're not like everybody else. You got your flavor. Mm. Amen. Read for me, honey. Amen. We go on to Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse. She got to be now. She don't need it. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 5 and 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, uh -huh. but if the salt have lost its favor, his favor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Hallelujah. You are the salt of the earth. Amen. You add flavor to the situation. Jesus. When you are on your job, the whole atmosphere should change because you showed up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If they were fighting and acting crazy, Everything should switch because you stepped on the scene. You're bringing the flavor of God with you. When you sprinkle a little salt and water, you taste that thing. It's not the same anymore. That's the flavor that you bring. Amen. Nothing should be the same when you show up. Because you're bringing God with you. Jesus. Step into your flavor. Walk in your flavor. You shouldn't be arguing with them on your job. Jesus. Not when you got the flavor of God. You should be the one praying for them. You should be the one casting out demons. You should be the one laying hands on the sick so they shall recover. They should be so happy to see you when you walk through the door. Girl, it was crazy up in here, but thank God you showed up. <laughs> That's the flavor. The spice that changes the atmosphere. Are you walking in your flavor? Are you being the soul that you're supposed to be? Soul preserves. It keeps yes. things. Yes, yes, yes. Are you keeping things? Mm. Are you making a difference? You salt up a piece of meat and you save it. We should be the saving grace in the world. We should be telling people about Jesus. We should be salty. Bring the flavor. Are you flavorful mm. or flavorless? Mm. My God. Mm. Are you bringing the flavor of God to your situations? Salt regulates the body. It helps keep your water right. We are the flavor of God. We should regu be regulating the body too. Regulating the body of Christ. Bringing up your brother. Helping him out. Come on, let's pray about that. Let's talk. Yo, you going wrong with that. Where is your flavor? Are you savory? Does anybody know you're a Christian? Is it like a secret thing? You ain't got no flavor. Nobody can see you're different. Will they be surprised that you even go to church? You see somebody from your church. Hey, praise the Lord, sister. Good to see you. Like, you go to church? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I didn't think you go to church. It said salt when it's no good. When his purpose is done, they used to throw it on the field so we can mess up the fields. Are you unuseful to God? My God. Don't let God be done with you. Don't be a useless Christian. Don't lose your saltiness. 
always bring your flavor. Always make a difference. Always shine your light. Bring your flavor in every situation. You should be a life changer. Amen. <laughs> Turn to Psalms 139. We're going to read 13 to 16. You are the flavor of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you were made with a special flavor. There's a special anointing on your life. He made you special. You're not like me. He's not like her. Read for me, love. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Amen. God knew your end, your beginning before you even hear, your end and your beginning. He fashioned you. He created you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're special. You're different than anybody else on earth. Amen. There's nobody like you. God gave us our own fingerprints. Yes. Nobody has a fingerprint like you. What a masterpiece you are. The creator put you on the potter's wheel and made you a one-of-a-kind, perfect masterpiece. Hallelujah. Walk in your perfection. Don't worry about being anybody else but you, baby. You have your own flavor. You have your own gifting. You have your own anointing. You have your own DNA. People getting off of death row because they found out, wow, this is not even his DNA. He didn't even do this crime. Jesus, ain't God perfect? You have your own DNA. There's nobody like you. That's how individually God made you. Just like he made the snowflakes. They said there's no snowflake alike. There's nobody like you. Walk in your flavor. You got your own style. Don't try to be anybody else. He didn't make you that person. You can admire their giftings, but you're made it with your own gifts. You're a peculiar person. Mm. Don't worry about what they, they think you're different. Yeah, you are different. Because you're you. You're not them. Be the best you you can be. Don't worry about being T.D. Jakes. Don't worry about being Juanita Wine. Amen. Be the best age of her you can be. Hallelujah. That's what we need to perfect our perfection. Be the best you you can be. Walk to be perfect in you. Look how I can shine my light for me, for him. Be the best me I can be. Whew. There's nobody like me. God says so. That's what you need to say. There's nobody like me. I'm the, I'm the best me I can be. <laughs> you can't be me. <laughs> and I can't be you. And I don't want to be I've got my own flavor. Yes. And I'm going to walk in that flavor. Read Matthew 25 and 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. Familiar. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, mm -hmm. to another two, Amen. and to another one, to every man according to his several <clears throat> ability, <clears throat> and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also <coughs> gained other two. 
But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Mm. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Yes. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Mm. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest me un unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Yes. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered him and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with your serene. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For every one that hath shall be given. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus. 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 God says he's giving you a talent. He's giving you abilities. He's giving you giftings. He's giving you your own specific flavor. Your own style. He wants you to use it, not bury it. Mm. He wants you to come and be fruitful, yeah. be profitable, be useful to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. The first servant, he went and traded it. This guy was like a stockbroker. I got five, I'm going to make five. We're going to make this thing happen. The second servant, God gave him two. His master gave him two, and he made two. It doesn't say what type of talent or ability he had. He just used whatever he had, and he made two more. Yeah. The next man took his one. Uh, I'm just going to bury it when he come back. I'm going to say, look, I got it. <laughs> come on. He said, you wicked servant. Is that what we want God to say to us? Come on, Jesus. I gave you talents. I gave you abilities. I gave you giftings. I gave you flavor. Come on, now. And you ain't did nothing with it? Jesus. Nothing with it? How many people did you save? How many people did you bring to Christ? Jesus. How many people did you invite to church? How many people did you share the gospel with? How many people did you tell your testimony to? Work with me. I'm trying to give you something. Come on, Dad. Was there anything that you did for me? Yes, yes, Come yes. On and Talk about it. Well, uh, I did. Uh, uh, we need to be working this thing. We need to be working our giftings, working our talents, working our abilities, working our flavor. People see you. Shine for God wherever you are. Not just on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. This is not a Sunday morning thing. That's right. Those people are saying, yeah, you look great on Sunday morning. We got on our Sunday best. Hallelujah! Nobody can shout like you. Hallelujah. Yes, you speak in tongues. Oh, oh, oh. But you won't pray for the bum on the street. Jesus. You're walking past the drunkard. Jesus. They need Jesus. Amen. But you're ignoring them. You're walking past them like they don't exist. Your friends need Jesus. But they don't want to hear that, so you don't tell them. They ain't ready for that. How do you know you never shared? They're hurting, they're in pain. They need a savior. And you have them and you won't share them? Jesus. 
You have the key to eternal life. Jesus. You have the key to shalom. That special kind of peace. That peace that passes all understanding. But you're keeping it in your pocket. Yeah, I got Jesus. Share your flavor. Share your giftings. Stop just being a Sunday morning Christian. Come on, Jesus. Stop just being a... Only when I'm around my Christian friends, Christians. When I'm around the church people, yeah, hallelujah. When I'm around my boys in the street, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Be real with God. God is tired of the double-mindedness. Come on now. He's tired of it. He said, I'm casting out the wicked servants. I need people who are on fire for me, who are serious about the things of Christ. It's time to get serious about the things of Christ. He's coming back soon. Yes. And he's looking for a church without a spot or wrinkle. He's looking out people. He's looking for people who are serious about him. What have you done for my kingdom? What have you done with the talents I've given you? What have you done with your flavor? Well, I did shout on Sunday morning. Uh, I was the best Holy Ghost dancer. Uh-uh. You work on your step. You be ah. Uh, you in the mirror. <laughs> what have you done for me? What have you done to, for the kingdom, for the uplifting of my kingdom? I sent you a whole bunch of friends who weren't saved. I put you in the midst of them because you're supposed to be the flavor. Jesus. You're supposed to be the flavor. That's why I introduced you to them. That's why I put you there. So you can be the flavor. So you can be the driving force to bring them to me. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. But you became as one of them. Oh, my God. Jesus. When you were supposed to change the atmosphere. That's what I put you there for. Come on, preacher. Mm. Not to fit in. Jesus. Not to be like them, but so they, they can see Jesus. So that they can be like you. Or they can see that something is different in you. And I want to know what's different about you. You have something that I don't have, and I need it. You always see so happy. You, your check be the same as mine. You will seem like it goes so much further. How are you doing this thing? Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Mm, Jesus. Mm. We try to make it about us. Yeah, you know, I'm a good money manager. <laughs> I just be doing my thing, you know. <laughs> Come on now. You better give honor to the God. Yes, sir. Yes. The God who blesses you. The God who keeps you. The God who delivers you, who heals you. Start talking about it. Stop trying to say it's you. Be merry, merry. It's the God in me. It's the God in me. But instead, we're trying to front like it's all me. It's all me. Yes, I got it going on. Flavorless. Flavorless. We need to be more like Jesus. Amen. We need to walk in the flavor, the giftings of the one who sent us. <sighs> ah, Jesus had flavor. <laughs> he did things that, like, wow. Of course, he's, he's the son of God, but read Matthew, the 14th chapter. The 13th verse. Give him a second. Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 13th verse. We're going to be to the 21st verse. Another familiar passage. When Jesus heard of it, when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. 
See, when you have something different, they want it. Amen. People are hungry for that something Amen. different. That's how you're supposed to be bringing to something different to people like, well, let me follow you because follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Read. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they must that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Okay. So it's getting late. It's a big crowd here. We need to stop the service and send them away so they can go get, go eat. Thanks first. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. Mm -hmm. They don't need to go anywhere. You give them something to eat. Mm -hmm. This is where <laughs> there's a verse missing in the Bible. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> what does Jesus say next? And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. Okay. And oh, between verse 16 and 17, he said, um, Send them away to go get them something to eat. He said, We only have, you know, five loaves and two fishes. Mm -hmm. And Jesus had first said, you feed them. You feed them. Hallelujah. Jesus, hey, maybe you're not seeing the crowd that's out there. Jesus. There's 5,000 people out there. Mm -hmm. That's the men. Not counting the women and children. children that's mm -hmm. right. We talk about 5,000 people. Jesus. And we ain't got no food. <laughs> we got five little, we don't got enough food for the 12 of us. <laughs> no less these 5,000 6,000 people. Are you serious? <clears throat> See, that's missing in the, in the scripture. Because you know the real people, the real tough, rugged crowd who were these disciples, they was like, man, stop all this. Are you serious? Where are we supposed to get food to feed all these people? Come on now. Jesus. And for Jesus to even say that to them, he had flavor. He had flavor. He said, you feed them. You feed them. <laughs> what, I got a store in the back? We're in the wilderness here. I'm saying send them to the town so they can eat. Oh, you feed them. Hallelujah. See, when we have faith, we can move mountains. Amen. Amen. That's the faith coming back up. Amen. That now faith. You got to know that God will provide for you. Yeah. No Amen. Matter what. No matter what the situation. No matter what it looks like. God will be your provision. He'll open up doors. We just have to stay in prayer and stay holy and righteous. Because he's not going to bless our mess. We keep getting further and further away from him and asking him, God, you know, give me this, give me that. When was the last time you've been in church? Yay. Jesus. Jesus. One time I was so far away from God. Something happened. Something bad happened. I was like, God, I need you, God. And he said, you talking to me? <laughs> and I was like, whoa. And then I was Hallelujah. like, wow, I really hadn't talked to you in a long time. A long time. Matter of fact, at that time, I couldn't remember the last time I talked to him. And just like you're sitting here, he said, you talking to me? I was like, wow. Sometimes we need that check. Mm -hmm. See, you want the gifts of God. Mm -hmm. You want things from God. He said, oh, are you talking to me now? Now you're crying out to me after it's been this long. You ain't talked to me in years. Now, oh, you're talking to me. <laughs> we talk like that. <laughs> we talk to everybody like that, but he talks to me like that because that's how, you know. Yes, amen. That's my relationship with him. He, I understand that. Mm -hmm. He gets me. He gets me like that. You know, I can take that. Okay, yes, true. I hadn't talked to you in a while. Yes. I've been unfruitful. I've been flavorless. Yes, God. Yes. Mm. Jesus had so much flavor that even when he was going to the cross... They gamble for his clothing. Wow. <laughs> That's how 
much flavor he had. Right, right. His stuff was so fly, the soldier's like, no, nah, I'll get that. No, 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 I'll get that. Well, come on, we got to shoot for this because I want that. That's how much flavor the man of God had. God's son, he was walking around. He was like, uh-oh, we got to take that before he go to the cross. <laughs> That's flavor. We got to gamble for that. You think the people who was going to the cross, they was trying to take their clothes? Come on now. You ain't gambling over that thing. You got this one, I'll get the next one. Amen. His was so nice, they like, uh-uh, come on now. We got to shoot for this. Mm. Flavor. Flavor. Jesus. <sighs> Jesus, when he comes back. Read Revelations. Mm. When he comes back. He comes back. Mm. See, it was a sheep led to the slaughter, but when he comes back. Mm. Jesus. When he's that conquering lion, that... Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and he's coming back with some flavor. Amen. And he's coming back. Hallelujah. Read for me, though. Revelation 19, verse 11. 11 through 16. Thank you. That's our job to correct me. Amen. <laughs> and I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Mm. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Flame and fire. And on his head Jesus. were many crowns. Many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Mm. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. He had a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called... Because this is what y'all did to me. I want y'all to remember. Jesus. And his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen. God, I just want to be part of the army riding in with you. I just want to be part I'll be way in the back. I just want to be part of the army in the white horse. We coming for you, devil. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Clean in your linen. You know, it's like a white summer party. You're coming with the white, clean linen. Fly. Flavor. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite. Out of his mouth is coming a sword. Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Mm. Yeah. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness yes, and wrath of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh. Now he's coming in his robe. And on his robe. See, this is this is where you know we come from Jesus. Black people come from Jesus. Because this is some real black stuff right here. <laughs> Jesus is doing right now. When he come and say, his robe says, the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. That's some real black stuff. That's the type of stuff that we do. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'm the greatest of all time. Jesus coming and saying, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. What? What? Who wants some? Devil, you out of here now. Your time is over. That's flavor. That's flavor when you show up and you're like, maybe y'all don't know who I am because the word of God is here. <laughs> I got a little blood dipped here just so y'all remember what you did to me. I got a name that no man knows. Jesus. And then, it's, then I'm coming with Lord of Lords, King of Kings, my fly robe, on my white horse. Go ahead. Come and get it. Come and get it. Your time is over, devil. Woo, Jesus. Just let me be in the back in my linen going, yeah, I got to get him. <laughs> flavor. Yeah. Flavor. Flavor. Our God is a flavorful God. Yes, he is. <sighs> he's a loving God. He's a merciful hey. God. But one day the mercy is going to be over and he's going to come and handle his business. Jesus. Amen. So we have to be about our father's business. Amen. It's time to get serious about the things of God. He's made you in his image. He's given you your own twist of flavor, your own giftings. Start walking in your flavor. Start using your flavor for the kingdom. Stop saying, yeah, I'm fly. Stop trying to put it all on you, yeah, yeah, you know. Amen. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's all about him. Mm -hmm. Your flavor should be used to uplift the kingdom, Jesus. to magnify him. Be who he designed you to be. Yes. Be it for God. 
You're an individual. You're a masterpiece. There's no one like you. There's no other one like you. I don't care if you're a twin. He don't. He or she don't have your fingerprint. Even your DNA is not the same. God made you an individual. Amen. He put you on the potter's wheel and he said, oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, no, a little more of this. Okay, now she's ready. <laughs> That's our God. Nobody can be you but you. Be the best you you can be. Be fit, flavorful. Start changing your atmosphere. It's time for you to make a difference in this world. That's what we're called to be. Difference makers. Are you spreading your flavor? Or are you flavorless? Are you like salt free? Hey, you cut out and do that see. You take eat it, you're like, mm, this don't got no flavor. This is like diabetic. <laughs> what is this thing they gave me here? No. God called you to be the salt of the earth. He called you to be savorful, flavorful. Stop sitting back on God. Stop sitting back on your giftings. Stop sitting back on your anointing. You know what you're called to do. Yes, yes. Stop saying one day I'll do it. No, only the things you do for God will last. Only the things you do for God will last. But you're trying to do every other thing. First, when, after I make some money, then I can go serve God. <laughs> if I get this new car, then I can go serve God. Yeah. God said, you'll never get there. Because you put those things ahead of me. Amen. It's time to put God first in our lives. Amen. First in every situation. Hallelujah. Be flavorful. He's made you special. He wants you to infect the earth. Infect the atmosphere. Wherever you are, people should know Christ just walked into the situation. Here comes Jesus. Let them call you Holy Roller. Here come Holy Roller. Oh, here he come again. Oh, he's going to play that Jesus music for us. That's all right. I know the God I serve. Okay, thank you, Jesus. He's the one that kept me. He's the one that woke me up today. He's the one that healed me, delivered me, set me free. And whether you know it or not, he's done it for you. So let me tell you about this, Jesus. Be flavorful. It's time to shine your light for Christ. It's time to stop putting it under a box. Stop hiding it. Stop being only a Sunday Christian. Everybody else is out of the closet. We in the closet. Nobody knows you go to church. You ain't invited nobody to church. You got your Bible deep in your back drawer underneath three newspapers and five files. <laughs> so nobody will find it by accident. Because you sure ain't put them out to read it. Not even on your lunch break. Jesus. They reading all kinds of stuff. And you there talking about it. Yeah, girl, you see scandal? Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> Where is your flavor? My, my, my. Very. Jesus. This is what we have time to share. We talking about scandal and Mary Jane, but ain't nobody talking about Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Ain't nobody sharing the gospel. Don't be the wicked servant. Don't be the one who buried your talent. And God says, I have no use for you. but cast you out. Don't be that servant. When the Lord comes back, when we meet him in the sky, it's your turn to meet him in glory. Let him say, welcome into my kingdom, my good and faithful servant. You was out there working the vineyard. 
Lord, I'm proud of you. Here's your reward. Here's your mansion. You got the second mansion on the left. That's you. Right up the block from your grandmother. <laughs> That's what we want God to say to us. Not casting us out. Because we didn't do anything for him. Be flavorful. Amen. Be flavorful. He's called you to more. It's time to fulfill your calling. Hey, Jesus. My God. It's time yeah. to fulfill your calling. Stop saying I can't do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All things. My God. What does all mean? All means all. That's all. That's all. It don't mean some. It don't mean a little bit of things. It means all things. He's given you that dream, that vision. <coughs> He's placed that in your mind. God. Jesus. No, maybe I just came up with that. But he keeps telling you over and over again. And you try to put it off. Jesus. Well, when I get some money. You can't do it without money, though. Come on. This is God. The God of the universe. We got favor. <laughs> Amen. We got Amen. favor. Favor is yours. You are the righteousness of God. That's right. He said, you, favor is yours. You should expect it. What are you giving back to him? Don't be the wicked servant. Jesus. Don't be the wicked servant. Walk in your flavor. Walk in your gift. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for the word that he brought forth through the man of God. We thank God for what it is that he has done. And we know that it's late and we know that it's time to go. But once the Holy Spirit has released something in the atmosphere, those of us that the hearers of it, we need to put a demand on it. Isn't that right? We need to put a demand on the word of God. Some of us have worked all week. I just happen to be full-time kingdom. I just happen to be retired and all I do is work for Jesus. But I'm here to tell you that he that ascended, he gave gifts unto men. He is our flavor. We don't need the spirit of Elijah. Why? Because he gave us his spirit. The same spirit that was upon Elijah now dwells within us. He said that we will do greater things in him. We are hit the flavor because of him. I'm going to ask that you stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Woman of God, I'm going to ask that you come. Hallelujah. We're going to do this quick. Hallelujah. Sister Ariel, I want you to come. Brother, I want you to come. I want you to come. You come. Preacher, come. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Sister Nicole, I want you to come. Hallelujah. Brother Raymond, I want you to come. Give your baby to your mother. Hallelujah. We're going to do this really quick. One behind the other. I'm going to anoint you tonight. That Joshua generation. I'm going to anoint you, Minister Roberts, because I'm going to tell you something. Y'all are the flavor. Y'all are the young, and y'all are strong. Those of us that are older, we wise. But y'all have to pick up the torch and run with it. Like never before. Oh, God, God uses you in a mighty way already. You're going to be laying hands, casting out demons. Watch the signs that follow your ministry. Watch it. Radical with it. He showed me you in the spirit. He showed me you. If it's in the word, you do it. Just let him back you up. Do it until it comes into fruition. Because it is written, it is already so. Because it is written, it is already so. Hallelujah. He wants to use the young people. He want to use y'all. Hallelujah. You're going to be such, oh my God. That's right. Run up and get, you see that? Run up and get that blessing. If we don't move fast enough, someone to jump up in our place. Raise your hands to God, woman of God. I want you before the throne. Don't even think about me. I'm just a vessel. We have to learn how to get it from God. Hallelujah. The flavor, the salt of the earth. 
Receive it in the name of Jesus that you shall be the salt of the earth, that you have the words of everlasting life. He cut out under the sea, he cut out under the oh, he did it under the oh, see, huh? receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it.